Good morning to you from Holy Trinity Gislam. I'm outside in the graveyard, as you can see, and a thought crosses my mind this morning. All these people that are lying here would have given anything in exchange for their lives. Of course, we don't know the circumstances of their deaths. Each one are individual, unique and different. But that's something I can guarantee, that none of them wanted to end up in this place. And uh, the word exchange comes to my mind today. And I want to share a scripture with you in a moment. Hello again from inside the church this time. I came to know the Lord Jesus um, through one verse of scripture. And it was this one. And I'm going to read it. And then uh, I just want to take us uh, from Matthew 16, verse 24, into Matthew 17 a little bit. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? And uh, I think I'll stop there actually. What will a man give in exchange for his soul? I was saying outside now, those people in those graves would have given anything for an extra day of life. One more opportunity perhaps to see their family, to do something. But like all of us, all our wishes in the end get denied. All our plans get cut short. But I was thinking about the word exchange. Of course, we, we hear the word exchange a lot, don't we, in terms of the stock exchange or foreign exchange. We perhaps don't think about it much more than that. It actually only occurs in the KJV once. As far as I can see, I stand corrected. And that's in Matthew 16, 26. There's a mark equivalent as well. Antalagma is the Greek word, antalagma. And uh, it seems to have many connotations, and I've got a few here. An exchange, an equivalent. If I take my money to uh, the bank and I want pounds for dollars, I'll get the equivalent. But of course, I won't get as many pounds as I will dollars. But um, it has many other, other denotations. Well, to use the word denotes. <laughs> It denotes, let's just say, shall we? I don't know if uh, there's a following word from that, but it denotes a contrast, a substitution. And uh, you can think of the words switch and swap. How will we change from one thing to another? That's what the, the grand scale of the thing is all about. And let's just go on here a little bit. The value of the soul. There is nothing more valuable on this earth than your soul, because it's the only thing you can take with you into eternity. Jesus goes on, interestingly, from that piece of scripture in Matthew 17, and it says, after six days, Jesus taketh, taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto him, unto them, Moses and Elijah talking with them. There. What an exchange. He was transfigured. Maybe I'm using the word loosely, but what did Jesus transfigure into? He transfigured into what he really is. The absolute perfection of the creator. It was so bright they couldn't look at it. Moses' face, remember, shone so much that people couldn't bear, the, bear to look. God's glory is wonderful and great. But this world and the men of this world, they want you to exchange your soul for something else. They want you to transhumanize. They want you to become one of their upgrades. But Jesus has an upgrade for us. 
And what does he say in 1 Corinthians 15? We will all be changed in the twinkling of an eye. And it will be changed from the corruptible to the incorruptible. But Satan's got another plan. His plan is to exchange you into something not human. He wants to bring you into his reckoning. So, the opposite is another word that uh, exchange denotes. And what is Satan? Nothing but the opposite of Christ. The Antichrist. The word anti comes from antilagma. The vicar of the Son of God. That's what the Pope calls himself. In place of Christ. An Antichrist. But the Antichrist is the one that wants to do that exchange with us. He wants our bodies corrupted. And that corruption is coming. We know it right soon. I'll deal with it in other videos, um, what they're planning. I think it's pretty much now out in the open, isn't it? That they want to make us into something else. But Jesus has his plans, and that's what I want to focus on this morning. We will be like him, it says, when we see him. Isn't that a wonder? Isn't that something to look forward to? No more suffering bodies. No more sore ankles. No more arthritis. No more heart trouble. No more strokes. Everything in perfect working order. There's an animal that uh, I, I'm quite familiar with, having lived in South Africa. It's called a springbok. And I was telling a, a, a brother in the Lord about the springbok the other day. He actually it was quite an elderly man, but he didn't know what a springbok was, of course, not having been to South Africa. Those of you that are, who I'm speaking to that are there or have been to the game reserves will know what I mean. We often used to see them as we entered the game reserves. They, uh, they were just like a deer, and they had very long and very thin legs, but they bounced, and it was as though they were defying gravity as they go along. The springbok, just springing along, defying gravity and um, that's what Jesus's body was like wasn't it I think if we turn to uh, I think it's John 21 I don't know the exact verses where Jesus comes to the disciples after his resurrection and he comes basically through the wall and he says peace be unto you and of course he wasn't a ghost they thought he was a ghost but he ate a piece of food I think it was fish he showed them, showed them his hands, showed them the stigmata, the hands in his, the, the holes in his hands, and then they believed. But it was the same Jesus. It was the same body, but it was different. There was an exchange from human to the truth. And the truth about us is that we're being remade right now. Although our physical bodies are dying, there's a, an interruption that's coming. We know it as the rapture. We won't talk about the timing this morning of the rapture, but just the fact that it's going to happen. And that's the wonder of it all. And that gives me a joy. And I stand against the enemy with my joy, knowing that I've got a great exchange coming. What a great exchange to know that we're going to be like Jesus. Actually, I think it's worth reading that scripture in 1 Corinthians 15 that addresses this directly, this great exchange. I'll go from verse 35. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool. That which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. That's what Jesus said, didn't he? Deny himself, die to self. Starts now. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain. It may chance of wheat or of some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. 
all flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. Interesting to note here that they're all flesh. There's no iron mixing with clay here. This is God's purity. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. God has his cutoff points. You know, there are clear divisions between certain kinds of flesh, certain kinds of bodies. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. There is the great exchange. It is sown in dishonor, raised in glory. Sown in weakness, it is raised in power. What an exchange. Weakness to power. Dishonor to honor. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. That's what we're looking forward to. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. And that's what we are. That's what we are becoming. Like Christ, quickening spirits. How be it, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is of the Lord from heaven. And we will be like the second man. Don't listen to the false prophets that will tell you that they are gods. The scripture is not telling us that. That is blasphemy. What we will become is like him. And that's the glory. We will reflect his glory. Verse 48 goes on. And as the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. There's that aspect of the great exchange. We will bear the image of the heavenly. Now I, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. There's a clear division between the two. Behold, I show you a mystery. This is the great exchange. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal man must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? I'll stop there. There is no victory in the grave. Yes, the transhumanists will want us to, well, they'll try and are trying to prolong life, extend life, possibly even forever. That's their intention. So they can populate this earth and keep it the way they want it to be. But of course, we know that that's not going to happen. We know that our death will be swallowed up in victory, swallowed up completely, nothing that resembles death. Because it's interesting, isn't it, that if you corrupt the human body with something else, the piece that's corrupted still exists as corrupted. That bit that is going to die will still die. But this is something complete. This is something that is a complete change. Something that will never die. We need to walk around realizing this. 
we carry within us that treasure of the Holy Spirit. We carry within us that deposit of eternal life. Let's not forget that. When we forget it, we look to man and we start submitting to lies. Yes, medical science has improved things over the last 150 years. There have been great cures for certain things. We can't deny that. And many of our lives have been prolonged by procedures. But ultimately, this is what we're facing, this is what we're looking forward to. Something so wonderful we can't imagine it. Somewhere in the Psalms it says, I has not seen or ear nor not heard the things that God has planned for those who love him. And that's the way we get into the kingdom. It's by dying to self, as that scripture reads in Matthew 16, denying ourselves, taking up our cross, following Jesus. Keeping on the road is what's going to keep us safe and secure, knowing that we will inherit that eternal life and that we will experience that great exchange up in the sky. I pray today's blessed for you. Have a good weekend.